Hello everyone and welcome to this video where I talk about what I did to earn the mighty Caravan Brutus or mount using only one account with two different characters. No boosts or boost spamming, no multi boxing or anything like this was involved, just my main character and my farming character. Yesterday when I went to bed with around 30,000 gold left for a mount I was almost shaking. I had a bunch of stuff on the auction and I was hoping for it to sell during the night. When I woke up I realized not much had sold and I prepared to grind the last gold by doing some transmog farms in old raids for the rest of the day. After an hour or so a huge chunk of consumables sold on the auction and I got ecstatic because my several months long grind had finally come to a halt. I started this journey a few days after it was announced that the mount would be removed from the vendor. At that time I had about 900,000 gold on my character. This is my story of what I did to get to the special moment when my heart was jumping with joy once I finally had the reins in my inventory, and how rewarding it felt to see all that work pay off in the end. Some people say that the Brutus Armount is not worth the 5 million gold it takes to get. To me it was worth every gold coin, and the reasons for this are many. 1. Whenever stackables or any other items sell now I can see right away how much gold I got without going back to Orgrimmar. Two. I can repost items at record speed as long as a mailbox is present, in the entire world, I'm not just limited to Orgrimmar anymore. 3. Expiring items can be reposted right away when I need it with a mailbox. 4. During outdoor raids or during item farms I can bring it up and post what I want whenever I want. No need to go to Orgrimmar to appraise item value or sell anymore. I do it on the fly and free up my inventory space. 5. After indoor raids I can just see what items are worthwhile to post and not. Vendor the rest, repair my gear and go to the next raid. No need to go for Orgrimmar or add-ons to check the value or whatever. Going directly to the next transmog raid, farm or whatever is just done on the spot. This saves enormous amounts of time and speeds up gameplay. Going to Orgrimmar is fast assuming you can use the hearthstone, but going back takes time. 6. Combined with a portable mailbox you can repost stuff anywhere where the mountain mailbox are usable. One toy that I haven't gotten yet, required in Dalaran from an achievement, lets you summon just that. The bad thing is that it comes with a 3 hour cooldown. The good thing is that for tinkerers, which I'm not, there is also another mailbox available, further increasing mailbox usage on the go with the auction. This combination of portable auction and mailbox makes you deadly on the auction competition scene. Someone posts, you can just repost and bam, your wares are first again to sell. Now for the part most of you have been waiting for. For the people who want the mount as bad as I do, but maybe don't know how to do it. Before anything else, I need to state that I play on a high pop server, so items sell relatively fast. Low pop servers might have a much harder time. My absolute favorite farm of them all was the spare part farm, located at the Junkwatt Depot in Mechagon. For this farm to work as good as possible, you need a 2 x 4 group. This means that there are 2 groups with 4 people in each. Absolutely no more than 4, because if you have more than 8 people total the mobs will start going grey and this reduces the gain for everyone involved. 2 x 4 groups can usually be found in LFG tools, so you just check for 2 x 4 farms or create some of your own, which takes some getting used to, but it's worth it in the end. Once you have these 8 people farming for about 10 minutes, moves will start getting a much faster respawn rate, so you can just nuke them to oblivion and claim their rewards ultra fast while new mobs spawn. Mobs here have a high health so try to pull them all to the center and deal area damage on all at once. If you have a monk with the ox statue that pull mobs towards it, put it at the center to maximize the speed at which mobs group up. Just remember that turning on the rain will make the hyper spawn take a pause for another 5-10 to 10 minutes, so do it at your own risk. The reason this farm is popular is because the mobs here drop hardened springs, temper platings and machine gear assembly, which are items you can combine to get bundles of recyclable parts which convert into spare parts after handing them in at the quest bot. These are important for four main reasons. 1. The first time each day the bot also gives you some reputation with rust bolt resistance. 2. The crates you make with the spare parts are used to create feasts which are food items to increase the stats of an entire raid. It's the top end food at the moment so it sells for a lot to bigger raid guilds and the rest of the ingredients are pretty cheap. Creating a feast usually costs around 300 to 400 gold based on my server prices and they sell for between 800 to 2000 gold, which means that each spare crate you can make into food and that gains you around 400 to 1600 gold extra after selling it. 3. There are some extremely grind heavy achievements in Mechagon. One is to craft 1000 items using the Pascal bot and the other two are to construct and or help construct a certain number of construction projects on the island. Getting this the grind way takes hours upon hours. Not only do people want these achievements for themselves, but they are also part of a much bigger meta achievement that rewards the play with a mount that only exists in two colorations. 
One is the rusty looking rock from a mob on the island, the other is from this. So essentially people are buying the extremely costly mount this way instead of doing the work. They still need to use up the parts in the intended way though. Speaking of essences, there is also a rank 3 essence one can buy in Mechagon that costs a lot of spare crates, further increasing the value of the farm. This will be removed in the next expansion though. A good day here with the right markup can yield around 30 to 40,000 gold per hour, if the market value is right. The problem is that it can take a few days for it to sell sometimes, since people usually buy these in groves rather than small amounts, but once they do sell you gain a lot, and I mean a lot. Once again we're going to use the 2x4 method to grind an item called a rubbery flank in Nashatar. This item drops from the snapdragons in the zone and there is a particular spot at the drowned market where you can get around 40 to 50 of these every around 2 minutes if you do it right and get it lucky with the drops. The trick to this particular farm is to split the group up. You still have the 2x4 group as before but you put one ox statue up near the nightborn statue with 5 people camping that area and further downstairs at the fountain you put another statue if you have access to it and the other three people. Both areas need people from both groups so everyone gets the tags. In lack of a second ox statue manual pull works fine, since downstairs is such a small area so it's easy to manual pull. Then you slaughter everything you see, and once again it might take around 10 minutes for hyperspawn to start. And every 90 seconds or so you go to the place you didn't camp, you loot all the corpses, then head back to your designated spot and continue the slaughter. Doing this gives you almost double the amount of flanks as it would if you would only camp in one spot. These flanks are used for food that increase your versatility or haste and are used for single player buffs at raids. The value of these have dropped more and more as time passes, as the raids become less relevant the further an expansion goes on. So if you want to farm this, do it before it's too late. In Shadowlands and onwards, unlike Mechagon Farm, due to the achievement and amount, this farm will likely be worthless in the future. The positive thing is the flanks sell like mad, and since a lot of people need them, the competition on the auction house is fierce, so count of a lot of reposting and auction camping to sell these. Here comes a farm that's a lot more relaxing and can be done by anyone. It's one of the oldest gold making farms in WoW's history, and it's still relevant to this day. In the Northern Barrens there are three lakes containing deviate fish nodes that players can fish from. These fish sell well in the raw format and a few more gold when cooked into savory deviate lights. On my server these fish sell between 40 to 200 gold each depending on the competition and since there are spawning pools you will almost only fish up what you want with the occasional strangle kelp or crate. Druids will have an easy time here since they don't need to remount each time they switch spot but it's a good farm on any class. These fish turn you into a pirate or a ninja, and they used to prevent polymorphs in the old days. I don't know if they still do, but they do have a market value and that's all that matters. You can also fish these up outside the whaling caverns instance, or inside it if you so choose. There you can find fish from open water, no need to go to pools. The drawback from doing this is that you will fish up other stuff about 40-50% to 50 of the time, so the pools are still quicker. Nice if you want to do other things with your other hand while fishing though like using the phone to watch this video. Fishing leads me to the second fishing farm I did. This one only works during Darkmoon Fair and all you need to do is go fish the water surrounding the island for Darkmoon Dagger Moths which are almost a 90-95% to guaranteed drop. Occasionally you get a crate or a bloated thresher though. These threshers are the best thing you can get here as they contain up to 10 Dagger Moths and some 30-ish gold each. The Dagger Moths sell for less than savory deviate delights but they have a much bigger market. These fishes are used to buy toys and for 785 fishes you can buy everything the vendor offers. The most popular here thing is the underwater mount that sells for 500 fishes. And just like the Mechagon farm, people want to pay to not do the grind. These fishes go from around 19 to 40 gold each on average, but you can fish from the same spot without moving. You have a chance for threshers and they are usually bought in bulk, so it's a really good spot to farm during Darkmoon Fair. The fishes still sell well outside of the Dark Moon time frame, but you can't get any new ones at that time. In one hour you can usually get between 150 to 200 fishes depending on how fast they bite and how many bloated threshers you fish up. Another bonus to this farm is that you can get Dark Moon fire water in the crates, and that due to its size enhancer and faster gathering of items sell for around 20 to 80 gold each. Not the major thing of the farm, but it's a small bit that helps. This farm is best done in Drustar, not in Tiergard Sound, like I see so many people do. I am talking about Anchorweed, and you will need herbalism to do it. I created my second character only for herbs, alchemy and transmog farming. 
Drastvar is completely packed with herbs compared to Tiergard Sound and have many more possible spawns. And what you do here is that you get a bunch of druids or people equipped with shredders together. Max 10 or weeds start to despawn. You farm all the herbs in an area and alert each other through a raid warning when you see anchor weed. Then you group together and loot at the same time, within 10 seconds from the first loot, and all participants get a bunch of weeds each. With rank 3 on weed gathering, you will get around 4 to 7 weed per gather. Anchor weed is used in creating potions or expulsum and sells pretty good. This farm takes a lot of time and yields less gold per hour than the Nashatar and Mechagon farms, but you get a bunch of other herbs while farming and it's important to have a big variety of items to sell to gain as much as gold as possible. Farming just one item over and over will get you nowhere fast. Value has dropped lately, but like I said, it's nice with variety in items on the auction. It used to sell for around 150-200 gold each at the start of the expansion, but now it's down at an all-time low of around 30 gold each. Next up is the Transmog market, and this is actually how I first started the Brutusar farm. Transmogs can be worth a shit ton of money, but the drawback is that they sell extremely slow. You can put up 100-200 items on the auction every day for several days in a row, only to find that none sold. There are plenty of areas to farm, outdoor, dungeons, whatever, so this market is very diverse. The biggest thing here is to upload things that no one else has posted for a high price or to post high value items. I do post low value items around 500 to 1000 gold occasionally too though, but those don't sell a lot. And they also take time to repost. My personal cap is around 1000 gold markup, but the more items you have the higher you can take that cap. Transmog is about having as many items as possible to sell, so that the chances increase that something is bought. The best way I know to farm Transmog is with a druid, the right skills and the right equipment. Everything to get your speed up as much as possible. Druids have good instant AoE attacks, so they are extremely efficient at farming low level areas. If you're interested, a video to another YouTuber is in my description, so check it out for more detail on how to increase your speed. The important thing is, Transmog should be a side hobby while you wait for things to sell to increase the gain on the side. Only doing transmog farming will not yield the Brutusar mount in time. So if you are under pressure, focus on consumables only. They sell a lot faster and more reliably. From the 4,100,000 gold I earned since I started the farm, only around 110,000 gold came from transmog. And maybe another 30 to 40,000 from crafted transmog on my main character. But this video is a video of what I did, my way to the Brutusar mount, what worked and what didn't work for me. And this was a major fail. Handling the mail was a nightmare and it was a very, very high effort to keep it active. I do enjoy transmog farming though, because transmogs are just cool and contribute to other people's collecting. So I guess I feel kind of important doing that. Another area where I used to farm a little bit at the end was Suramar. Once again, we made 2x4 farms where you don't need to sell stuff on the auction. For this reason, it's practical but slower. Doing this has gained me around 7 to 12,000 gold per hour depending on the group I go in with. Some idiots, way more than I wish, decided to just pull all the mobs to the mid, which wastes a ton of valuable time from farming because all you do is running around. Other people split up and used the tactic from the rubbery flank farm with one big group and one small group, each pulling to their respective centers. That yielded me like 60% more income than the pull all to mid tactic. This farm was nice because it involved no trading, the gold was in my pockets right away. But farming 6000 to 11000 gold per hour when I could farm around 30000 gold per hour in Mechagon felt a bit meh, even if I had to wait for springs to sell. If you want to spend 10 hours per day doing this, you will gain around 60,000 to 120,000 gold. And it's a huge dedication and might prove inefficient if you want to farm the mount before it's removed. Again, it's okay, but nothing to focus your time on unless Mechagon or flank items don't sell well at the moment. It's more of a backup plan you should do while waiting for them to sell than anything else. Just remember that every minute you spend here, you're losing time on the auction where you could repost your stuff. The final two ways I made gold was by auction flipping and selling pets and toys. 
Many times during my Mechagon adventures I ended up buying all of the, or most of the, springs, platings and mechanical gears and reposting them way more expensive. Best deal I think I ever did was when the market was flooded with tempered platings. This sold for like 50 silver to 3 gold each. I bought almost everything, several thousands of them, and then I reposted them for 30 gold each. And they sold. I think I spent around 12,000 or 9,000 buying those, and by the next day I had already sold platings for more than 30,000 gold. Auction flipping is risky though, as unlike all the previous farms you can lose money here. For example, I decided to flip Strangle Kelp, which is a bottleneck for skilling alchemy, and Midnight Salmos because they were so cheap. Strangle Kelp sold well at first, but then others started farming and it kept dropping in value, making me lose around 3 to 4 thousand gold or more on it. Salmons I bought from the auction house for like 5 to 6 thousand gold, because they sold for like 20 silver to 2 gold each, only to realize that nobody wanted them. And then the prices dropped again, so I ended up selling it all for 1200 gold in the end. However, these blows didn't strike me as hard, since I still earned a lot from flipping the hardened springs and tempered platings and all that. Point is, flipping is risky, but if you do it right on the right items, you can earn thousands and thousands of gold by clicking on some buttons. The key is to look for huge gaps in markup and also know what price sells and what doesn't. As a side note, I also want to say that you should also farm some pets and toys. There are so many rare or valuable pets and toys out there that it would be too long for me to cover here. I gathered a bunch, sold a bunch. It was a nice side income to the usual farms. But just like Transmog, it was just a side thing to do. So, in short, you could rank my experience with farming like this. 1. Consumables. Sells very well and is always in demand. Farmed in the right way with 2x4 groups, it's a gold mine. Shared spot on number 1 is auction house flipping. This gets a shared spot, as it's extremely profitable, but it can also yield big losses if done poorly or being unlucky. It's a gold mine, but it's also a risk. 2. Pets. Pets can be worthless or a gold mine depending on how rare they are. They sell pretty fast though with the right price and level. A good tip is to always post a cheap level 1 pet and an expensive level 25 of the same kind to appeal to both people who want to level themselves or people who want to pay not to have to. 3. Transmog. Transmog was a huge letdown. In the old auction system I sold a bunch since people didn't have a clue what items were worth. They saw a transmog and they bought it. After the auction revamp more competitors have entered the scene and people are more aware as to what transmogs have doubles and not, so sales are worse. Nobody wanna buy an item that already have another item much cheaper of the same look. The positive thing though is that items with unique looks sell better than before. The biggest issue I had with this was the amount of time I needed to spend on the auction and mailbox to repost, undercut, in the old auction system, that is, only for the item to not sell. I also crafted a bunch of transmog with my tailor and some of it sold. I also crafted some bags that sold for 1500 to 7500 gold as well, but the undercutting from others drove me nuts and hindered my sales. So yes, crafting is also a nice way to make gold for some professions and items. But since this video is about my journey, and I didn't do a lot of it, only like one of each valuable transmog, and most didn't sell still at the making of this video, I can't say very much about it. Either way, that's how my journey went, and I can by far say that the best money gain I experienced myself was from the Mechagon farm, with the Flanks farm coming second. The rest was just extra income on the side, to have more stuff on the auction. This entire journey started when I realized I had to buy the mount for $400 if I didn't start the farm. It was an evil move of Blizzard to do this and I didn't want to support them with my money, so it's that hate and anger that fueled me to go all in with this grind. But now I can sit here on my Brutomsar mount in Lordaeron and look out over what's left of my undeath childhood from my debut back in Vanilla. To those who want to farm this, get to it now. Time is running out now and I know you can do it with enough patience and will. I felt hopelessness at the start, and here I am now. For those who still don't want to farm this mount, who can't see the practical uses of it and who don't want to spend the time for the biggest convenience item ever created in World of Warcraft next to the Hearthstone, I only have one thing to say. I am best. You are sensed. I am best. You are sensed. I am best. You are sensed. 
Also a quick little bonus to everyone who was here until the very end of the video. Mage classes without healing can now do the entire Ice Crown raid due to the concentrated flame where you can heal up the boss without the normal healer. So use that time to get the transmog the boss drops. Because in the next expansion it might take forever to find someone to farm them with. Oh yeah, and don't forget to subscribe or something if you like this video. Writing this manuscript took a few hours and gave me a headache from eye strain in the end, but now the video is finally done so I hope you liked it. Check my other stuff out too while you're here, I have over 500 videos by now. Adieu, and see you in game. Maybe.